Hello, welcome back to Algebra. We're going to learn about this thing called the point-slope equation of a line. And it's really, really important, if you haven't already done so, to go back to the previous lesson, the one just before this one, and watch that material if you haven't already done that. Because, effectively, I kind of showed you the point, uh, the, uh, the point, uh, point slope form of an equation of a line. I just didn't really tell you. So I did a bunch of examples in the last section where we were given that we had the slope of the line and a point. In fact, I'll write that down. We'll get started here. We were given, in the last section, we were given two pieces of information. We were given the slope, right, that's m, and we were given a point on the line. In this case, we're going to label it x1, y1, but that's not quite how we did it in the last section. I gave you a number. I said the slope was equal to 2 and the point was equal to, you know, 2, 3, or negative 1, 4, or whatever, but I gave you a point and I gave you a slope. Notice the title of this section is called the point-slope equation of a line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to derive uh, what we call the point-slope equation of a line using the same technique we did in the last section. So it sh you should be able to follow it, and at the end, what we're going to get, I'll circle it here at the bottom, is going to be what we call the point-slope equation of a line, and it's going to let you find equations of lines a lot faster than what we were doing in the last section, but effectively you're going to be doing the same thing. So rather than just talk about it all day, I'm going to encourage you to go back to the last section, watch that if you haven't, and then jump back here and then catch up with me, and I think you'll be enlightened. I think you'll learn something here. All right, so we're given the slope of a line and a point that the line passes through. And we know at the end of the day that we're going to be using this form of the equation of a line, mx plus b, um, which is the one we were using over and over and over again, the slope and the y-intercept. That's what's given in here. All right. Um, now, the procedure we did in the last section is we take the slope and we stick it in there. Now, since we're calling it m, it's kind of already there. I'm not giving numbers. I'm not assigning any numbers to it. I'm just saying the slope... This line has a slope, and it goes right into the spot. So what we did was we plugged it in to the spot, and then we calculated the y-intercept, but we had to use this point to do it. What did we do? We took the x value of the point the line goes through, and we stuck it here. And we took the y value of the, the point that the line goes through, and we stuck it there. And then we used the equation to calculate the y-intercept, right? That's what we did before. So I'm not putting any numbers here yet. I'm just saying it, it has a slope, and it goes through a point. Now we're going to stick these values in here. And you'll see where we're going and why we're doing that as we, as we go along. So this line passes through this point, so y1 is going to go here. y1 equals m, and then we plug the x value into here x1 plus b. This is the procedure we did before when we, had, we were given a problem with a lot of numbers, right? We put the slope in, and then we put an x and a y value of the point that it passed through, and then we calculate b. So let's isolate b. How do we get b by himself? We subtract this term, mx1, bringing it to the other side. So b, if you can convince yourself, is basically going to be y1 minus mx1. All we did was subtract mx1 from this side, meaning it disappears, and we subtract it from the other side, making it y1 minus mx1, b is all by himself. So we're doing exactly what we did before. We calculated the y-intercept. Now what did we do at the end of the day? Once we figured out what it was, whether the y-intercept was 3 or 4 or 2 or whatever, we stuck it back into this uh, equation of a line. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to plug in b. So let me write that down. Plug in b. Now what do we get when we plug in b? Uh, y equals mx plus b, but now we've calculated that b is equal to this stuff. So we just take this value for b and we stick it in there, just like we were doing when I gave you b as a number, or when we calculated b as a number. So it would be y1 minus mx1. Now I know we're getting a little bit deep here, but you're going to figure out you know, and see exactly how we get there in just a second. Now what I want to do, I'm not going to tell you why yet, let's take this y1 and let's move it to the other side by subtraction. So we're going to subtract y1 from both sides. So on the left hand side it'll be y minus y1 equals, now on the right hand side we subtracted y1 so it disappears. All we have left is this term and this term, so all we have left is mx minus mx1. Okay, now we're almost done. On the left hand side we have y minus y1, on the right hand side we have this guy, let's factor out an m because it's common to both terms. m, open the parentheses, x minus x1. All right, so now I'm going to circle this and I'm going to tell you that this is what we call in algebra the point slope 
form of the equation of a line. Now, you might be like, well, that seemed really complicated. Let's just take it one step at a time and go backwards and see uh, how we got there. What we did was we started with the equation of a line that we know to be true. If we're given that a, a slope, in this case, we're just leaving it as m. We're leaving it to be general. We don't know if m is 2 or 3 or 4, but we know that it's here. We can stick it into this equation, and it becomes m. It just stays there as m. And this line passes through this point. We stick the x and the y values into this equation, just like we did when we had numbers everywhere, and we solved for the y-intercept, just like when we had numbers everywhere. This is what the y-intercept is equal to. Then we stick that y-intercept back into the original equation, just like we did when we had numbers, and this is what we get. And then we just take the answer and subtract y1, and then we factor out a slope, and there you go. This is an equation that you need to remember and memorize, and it's something that you're going to get a lot of practice with in algebra. y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Now what it's saying is that basically if you're given a slope and you're given a point, that the line passes through. You can, you can find the equation of a line like we've been doing all along. We did a bunch of them in the last section. Or you can use this equation, which is specifically derived to, to make it easy to use. All you do is you stick the slope in here, and in the location for x1 and y1, you just put the values from the point you have. So y1, which is the y value of the point, it goes into this spot, and the x value of the point goes in uh, to there. And basically that is going to be exactly how you're going to use this equation. You're just going to stick the slope into the proper place and you're going to stick the x and y values of the point into its proper place. But I wanted to derive it for you here mostly because in algebra books, I know that when I learned algebra, I learned y is equal to mx plus b, mx plus b over and over again, and then they showed me this right here, and then I was like, well, wait a minute, that's a totally different equation of a line. And then you kind of think in your head that there's like two or three different form, different equations of a line that are all valid, but really they're the same thing. I mean, this thing right here actually comes from this. You can get here from here. So that means that this form really is no different than this one. It just makes it a little easier because if I'm given the slope and I'm given a point, I can't directly use this. I've got to plug in some values, solve for b, stick it back in, and then I can get the answer like we've been doing before. But since I've done all this manipulation ahead of time, I can then, if I'm given a point and the, uh, a slope and a point, I can stick it directly in here and circle the answer in it. And I know that since this comes from this, this is going to be a valid form of an equation of a line. All right, so that's about all I want to say. I could keep talking on and on and on about it. You probably should watch this lesson a couple of times just so you understand. But the main thing I'm trying to drill home is that even though this looks quite different than y is equal to mx plus b, it comes from mx plus b. So it is the same thing. It's just tailor-made for this kind of problem when you're given a slope and you're given a point. So what we're going to do in the next section, this lesson we just kind of derived it and I wanted to talk about it. In the next lesson we're going to solve several problems where we actually use it. So follow me on to those lessons and we'll do that now.